Good morning, everyone. Hello, friends and family of Ann Street Church. We are so blessed to be together in the sacred place to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through our worship on the second Sunday of Advent. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Exactly. We would like to now start our service, well, continue our service with the lighting of the Advent candle. We welcome the Barnes family. second Sunday of Advent, we are reminded that God will faithfully complete the promised creation. Advent is always a season of waiting, but these scriptures remind us that the waiting is worthwhile. We can still rejoice and give thanks for the love growing in our communities of faith and in our world. We can still give thanks and praise to the God who has saved us and is saving us still. We can continue to prepare for that great day when every valley of despair will be lifted up and comforted and every crooked path of confusion will be straightened and clarified so that all might walk on the path of peace. We invite you to hear the word of the psalmist from the 72nd Psalm. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. 
May he live while the sun endures, as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his day may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. Lord, may the light of the second candle, as it dispels the darkness around it, help to remind us that we are to dispel the darkness of sickness, poverty, injustice, and suffering all around us. Amen. Thank you for sharing that moment with us. Today's announcements, we have a few. Um, I want to call your attention to, in two weeks from today, there's going to be a wonderful children's program here in the sanctuary, December 19th at 9 a.m. I was here this morning when they were practicing. They are so darling. So please try to make it out for that. And Julia Royal Johnson is doing a fantastic job. The deadline for, to remember a, or honor a loved one with a poinsettia is today. So please complete the order form in your bulletin and make your check payable to Grace Your, your Circle. That is hard to say. Grace Your Circle. And drop it in the collection plate or the church office. Tomorrow, the American Red Cross Blood Drive will be here again in the Year Building. It is dedicated this time to the memory of Jean Duncan, a faithful volunteer during the uh, blood drives in the past. It'd be a great honor to remember her in this way. And now it's time for Pastor Taylor. Yes, I just want to uh, introduce, briefly introduce a video. Uh, this is um, a, a video that our own Doug Gilchrist has put together um, about Lighthouse Community Church uh, Food Pantry. Uh, why are we supporting a food pantry at another church? Well, this is just about the only or biggest food pantry down east. So much of the food uh, sustenance and food donations and things that we do go to Moorhead, but this one goes down east. And um, so our work teams and work teams from other um, churches, ha as you saw last week, have been helping uh, to uh, make this space uh, usable and make it uh, useful and um, efficient. And uh, we'd like to show you a little more about what we're doing. Uh, so if the uh, ushers will get the lights turned off, uh, we will get ready to show the video. Remember, this is what your Advent offering is going toward. I don't have the little green Advent offering envelope, but you see it uh, there with you. And uh, whether you use the envelope or just mark Advent, uh, it is going to, uh, your second extra, extra mile giving is going to support this, uh, this important ministry. Thank you. Let's uh, roll that video. <laughs> This little building was our flower building to put all our decorations and Christmas decorations in. But as you can see, the food bank's kind of taking it over. Uh, we have our coolers and we have a lot of stacking shelves that was donated by Ann Street Methodist Church in here. But in the, right now they're actually working on building me like a lean-to that I'll be able to put some of the um, uh, shopping carts and boxes and some of the coolers and things in that will kind of give us a little bit more space. So then we can have our flower building back. This is the, actually the sanctuary, as you can see, it's kind of set up different right now. But what we normally do, we have all the chairs, we, of course we set it up with the church. But then, actually last Sunday we had a little dinner, so the, the table was set up. But as you'll see, as we get a little bit further into this, what we're going to do is we're moving everything out, and they'll be bringing the, the food in. We have two storerooms back, actually three storerooms back here that we store everything in. So then we'll just stay out here, we fix together the bags, and if you want to look in the kitchen, you can see something we had left from last time. This is our typical food bag that we give out, in addition to meats, and if we can get it, we get milk, we get fresh produce. We almost always have some fresh produce. Uh, but in this bag, we and those are the biggest bags I can find, and they weigh a ton. We put the canned goods, we usually put a lot of variety of vegetables, canned fruits, we'll put in things like uh, Spaghetti sauce, uh, sloppy joes, stuff like that. We put in hamburger helper. We try to put in pastas. And that, of course, all that depends on what we actually get in. And then we'll top it off with candy and chips and 
crackers and but it, when you get this bag we had one of our actually one of our ladies went on and priced all the items in one bag and it was over a hundred dollars it's amazing how much food costs so they will get a bag of, like this they will get usually at least two meats sometimes three a lot of times they get um, mineral water we get fresh produce we a lot of times we get cabbage potatoes this week, I already know that we're going to have, we've already got grapes, kiwi, oranges, and I will get more produce. Sometimes we get produce boxes that has a variety of vegetables in it. So, um, usually on a Saturday, that the, the shopping cart will be full because they'll get a bag, they get the produce, they get the meats, and, and we had been getting some milk, butter, and cheese, so that's very helpful. Who does all the bag preparation? Volunteers. Volunteers mm -hmm. that are members of the church? Well, no, not actually. There's some volunteers from our church, but then we have just people from the community that come out. So I'll just send them texts, say, hey, we're doing TFAP tomorrow, show up. And we usually end up with about anywhere from seven to eight people that we put together. We set up all the food and we decide how much we're going to put in each bag. And then we just put the bags or the boxes in the cart and somebody will put it in the canned goods, somebody puts in the pasta, and we just bring it all around and fill them up. And we're ready to go. And today you're invited to the Lighthouse Community Church for a Merry Christmas floating open house from 3 to 6 p.m. There will be special singing, fellowship, uh, light refreshments, and a tour of the new pantry space that we just, we just saw. So, Where is the address? Uh, I'll get it for you it's by the end Stacey. of the service. Stacy's not big, just follow It's in, it's in <laughs> Stacy. Um, Kurt, do you remember it's... Uh, I think it's 2510. Yeah. 2510 Highway 70, uh, left hand side in Stacy. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Before we do our call to worship, um, I'd like for us to bow our heads for opening prayer. Father God, creator of all things in heaven and on earth, we humbly come before you to ask for your grace and truth to fall upon this sacred place a place that you have built and continue to bless for your glory. May our worship here today be pleasing in your sight so that the Holy Spirit will stir our souls and enrapture our hearts with your holy presence. In the precious name of Jesus, our beloved Savior, amen. If you would please stand for the call to worship. The response will be on the screen. A messenger calls, prepare the way of the Holy One. Make a pathway for God straight into your hearts. Blessed be the Holy One who brings light into the deepest shadows. A prophet proclaims, make way in the desert for the coming of God to live in our midst. Blessed be the Holy One who comes to live among us in peace. Are you ready for the coming day of God? Let us worship the One Please take a few moments to pass the peace to those around you.
what a wonderful sight. We, I, uh, Reverend Mills and I just witnessed everyone milling around and, and fellowshipping together. At this time, we'd like to draw your attention to the screen for our children's message by Julia Royal Johnson. Hey guys, good morning and welcome to the children's sermon. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Now let's say that word together on the count of three. One, two, three, Advent. That's right. And if you remember from last week, I told you that during Advent, we are waiting for something, actually for someone. We are waiting to celebrate the birthday of someone very special. Who do you think it is? Do you remember from last week? If you said Jesus, you are right. We are waiting for Jesus' birthday. Now, there were lots of people that were waiting for Jesus, the Savior, back in the day. And one of them was John, John the Baptist. And John is actually Jesus' cousin. And today, we're going to continue reading our book, 25 Look, and we are going to see what John was doing and what John was waiting for. And we're going to focus on looking around. Look around. The people of God were still waiting. They were able to return home to Jerusalem. Like we talked about last week, they had been exiled and weren't able to be there. But they did return. But things still were not the way that they were supposed to be. And I'm going to read a couple of pages from the book. It said they began to hope for someone special, someone who would come and set things right. Would this person be a wise king, a fierce soldier, a heavenly hero? Someone to destroy their enemies and rescue them from trouble? No one knew for sure what God had in mind. But John was waiting and John was watching for whoever God might send. He had been angry. He said that the world was unfair. He said someone is coming. Someone who will change everything. He will sort the good from the bad. And he said, you guys better change your ways. If you have two coats, you better give one to someone who has none. If you have extra food, you should share it with people who are hungry. Look around, see what needs to change. Be that change. And John, some people wanted to change and they were coming to the river where John was. And one day, someone special showed up, Jesus. And Jesus went into the water and he came up and the light shone on him and the doves sang and they heard the Holy Spirit talk. And John knew that that was the person he had been waiting for. That was the person God had sent. Now, during Advent, we look around like John. John looked around, saw what needed to be changed, even while he was waiting for that person to come. There are many ways that we can wait, but many ways that we can continue to do God's work while we're waiting for Jesus to return. We pray for our food. We think about all the people that bring the food to our table. We think about the farmer, the people who gather the food from the fields, the workers who bring it to the restaurants and the stores. We can be thankful for all of those people. We can also think about extra things that we have. We can donate food. We can donate our extra clothes and we can give to those in need. While we're waiting, we still are doing God's work. Now, we have something in our church. We have an Advent wreath. And here's a picture of someone who made an Advent wreath with their hands. And in the book, it says that every time they did something for someone else, they cut a hand out and put it on their wreath. What a wonderful way to celebrate the time of Advent. We also might bake cookies for our friends or give Christmas cards to people or share things with our neighbors. And we're gonna give things away. We're gonna see what needs to be done. And although our house might be a little less empty from giving away toys or clothes, it will make our hearts full. 
So while we're waiting for Jesus to return, let's look around like John and see what we can do now. See what changes we can make now. All right, will you guys join me in prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear God, during the season of Advent, help us to look around. Help us to see what we can do to show other people your love. Help us to see Jesus in those around us and help those in need. Amen. Okay, guys, I hope you have a great week. It's my honor and privilege to read the Gospel of Luke this morning in our hearing. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was a ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Amen. I'm so grateful to uh, Julie and to all our liturgists uh, who, especially when they get a um, passage like that one with a bunch of names of rulers and cities and stuff, they learned all the pronunciations. So good job on that. That's, that's, that's very important. Uh, settle in for a little bit of a longer reading, um, but it's storytelling time. This uh, passage is um, uh, not the usual lectionary passage. Uh, it's one that, uh, that I'd like to bring to you today, and if you were in Sunday school, you might find it somewhat familiar. So, uh, but the sermon is not too, f don't worry, I didn't repeat the, the, the sermon in, the Sunday school, in Sunday school today. This is Luke 1, 5 through 25 and 57 through 80. And as we've heard so much about John the Baptist, I want you to hear his origin story, if you will. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children. Because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God on his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice in his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord." He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before them to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord." Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know this is so, 
for I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. I wouldn't say that if I were a husband, but... <laughs> the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will be mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting outside for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When the time of service was ended, he went to his home. And after those days, his wife, Elizabeth, conceived. Praise the Lord. And for five months, she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace that I've endured among my people. Now, the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her. They rejoiced with her. On the eighth day... Per usual, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. So they said to her, none of your relatives have this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what he, name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet, and he wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed because immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed and he began to speak. And what did he speak? He praised God. Fear came over all the neighbors and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard of them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. And then his father Zechariah remember he hadn't spoken for nine months, was filled with the Holy Spirit and he spoke this prophecy. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. He raised them up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old that we would be saved from our enemies and the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown mercy to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord and prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. If that is the word of God for the people of God, will you say thanks be to God? Thanks be to God. Amen. Why wait? Waiting is so hard to do. I pull up to a supposed fast food restaurant and uh, wait and wait. And wait. Uh, if a website takes longer than five seconds to load, don't you feel kind of like, okay, come on. Come on, right? Most of us can get anything we need within two days, you know? Uh, you get the two-day shipping, and uh, there it is on you. You know what I'm talking about, yeah? You, 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 we used to have to go down. Now you can get your videos and your entertainment on demand. Isn't that an interesting phrase that they call that? that? We're so used to it, we, you know, we could pull up Netflix or something and watch it on demand. 
Well, that, that phrase says a lot. On demand. Mm, look at us. We used to have to go down to the video store and walk around and pick out a video. You all remember that? Mm-hmm. Now everything's on demand. We don't know how to wait anymore. Here in the Advent season, the church calls us to wait and to be present and patient. And this can be so difficult for us. Some pastors wait until closer to Christmas to let you sing Christmas carols. Hmm. Hmm. Some pastors. Presents start collecting under the Christmas tree in your home. And you start waiting to open them and you're getting more and more excited. The kids are getting more excited. The parents, kids... Your parents want to know what's in some of those presents, too, that they're, getting, that they're waiting on, that they're getting. So they're having to wait, too. They're having to learn to wait. And just as our parents, we grown ups, our parents told us to wait until Christmas to open gifts. So God tells us to wait until Christmas to celebrate that God's promises are fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. Put yourself in the shoes of an Israelite in the first century, if you, if you could imagine it. And you've been waiting, your, your, your ancestors, ancestors, ancestors have been waiting thousands of years for the one to come to save Israel. They waited patiently for the Lord, like Psalm 40 says. Along the way, the prophets reminded them again and again to stay faithful to God because one day God would send a deliverer. And with the start of Luke's reading, you know, we hear that this wait is nearly over because at the end of the long procession of prophets from all through the Old Testament, we get to John the Baptist. The occasion of his birth marks a promise fulfilled, a promise to his father Zechariah the Lord from the Lord, delivered by Gabriel. You just heard that story. And you know how, uh, you, you could see Zechariah and Elizabeth were tied to the temple life. Zechariah was a priest. Uh, and by the time that Gabriel visits Zechariah in the, in, the, in the temple, they're too old to have children anymore. But like Abraham and Sarah before them, remember that? Ever, how many of you thought about Abraham and Sarah when you thought, uh-huh? God gave them a child in their old age, too. The anticipation of the birth of John the Baptist was a long time coming, not just for Zechariah and Elizabeth, but for all of Israel. Because people had always heard in the prophecies that before the Messiah comes will come a herald. You know what a herald is. Harky herald angels sing. A herald is somebody who goes out ahead and says, someone else is about to come. Make way, make straight, get ready. Now, he would be born to Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zechariah was a priest, and he wasn't a particularly notable priest. He was your average run-of-the-mill priest. But Joseph was your average run-of-the-mill carpenter or, or tecton, engineer, they used to call it, or what we would call it today. And it happened to be Zechariah's turn to do the offering of incense in the temple, and all of a sudden, the angel Gabriel appears to him. Zechariah was probably in that part of the temple alone, you know. Uh, he was uh, very uh, um, exclusive. Uh, who could go in further into the temple? And he comes in, and all of a sudden, Gabriel appears. Have you ever been, you know, in the kitchen, like, cutting up some food or, or uh, mowing, the, mowing the grass and, and all you kind of hear is the lawnmower and all that. And you turn around and then there's somebody standing right there and you, and you have a moment, right? Where you realize that you didn't hear them come in. <laughs> imagine if that happened, but it was Gabriel. Could you imagine? Oh, you thought you were all alone. Maybe he let out a gasp. Luke says Zechariah was terrified and fear overwhelmed him, but the angel said what angels usually say. You know what that is? Be not afraid. Look at you. You sound, you're good. You, I put you all up against the Baptist this week on your Bible. Look at you. Look at you. Be not afraid. You are going to have a son, and his name will be John. 
He'll have the spirit and power of Elijah. Let that sink in for a second. He will make the people ready for the Lord. You know, we call that an annunciation, a proclamation that something great is going to happen. And you know who else got an annunciation? Mary. When Gabriel, same angel, appeared to her. And like Zechariah, she asked how this miracle will take place. But there must have been something different in the way she asked it and the way he asked it. Because when she asked, you know, the Lord said the Holy Spirit will come upon you and will bring a Savior. And she went on to, uh, to do that. But when he asked, uh, the angel Gabriel said, you know, if you're not into this, if you don't really get this, uh, you're going to be mute for all the, until this thing comes to pass. In other words, you're just gonna you're gonna be in timeout a little bit. <laughs> but when Zechariah was coming out of the temple, he couldn't have spe- he couldn't speak, which must have been painful for a preacher. But he does a bunch of hand motions, and they find out that he's seen a vision. Eventually, Elizabeth has the baby boy. Everyone's excited. They have the baby circumcised on the eighth day, as is the tradition. And also, that's when they name the child. And they were going to name him Zechariah. But Elizabeth said no. And they went to John, and he said he wrote his name is John. And just then, he could speak again. Because what did the angel tell him? Not just that he was going to be able to speak on the day of the boy's birth, but on the time that all these things had been accomplished. And they got accomplished when he named him John, like the angel said. And since then, everything that had been building up in Zechariah, every sermon he wanted to give had been building up for nine months. And he bursts with this song that I read for you today. My question for you is this. Isn't it all worth waiting for? Waiting is hard. But isn't it all worth waiting for? Sure, Jesus was born in our past, but we start our Christian year every year waiting for him to be born anew in us. We start by waiting. That's odd for us. It's strange for us. Imagine if you were running track and you're going to do a 100-meter dash and you get on your mark, they say set, and the next sound you hear is going to be like a boop or a pistol gun or you know, whatever, and instead the referee says, wait. Imagine the, the players get on the line of scrimmage in football, right, and the the quarterback's ready, and it's, it's uh, you know, 31, 24, or something, whatever those things mean. And then instead of hike, he says, wait. And the play clock runs out, and the referees don't throw delay of game, delay, you know, flags on the field. Everybody just waits. That's strange to us. Yet, here we are being called to wait patiently on the promises of God to be fulfilled. How will we react when they come to pass? Well, I'll tell you how Zechariah reacted. He praised the Lord with a song of joy. And that's what we can do. We wait and bottle up our expectations and our hopes and our joy, you know, we're still joyful, but we bottle up all this excitement about the Lord Jesus coming, and we bottle them up for four Sundays, right there. All you have to do is four Sundays. You don't have to do nine months, just four Sundays. And then Zechariah bursts forth. He gets unmuted. I don't know if you've been doing Zoom But I think the word of the year is unmute, right? He is unmuted, and he lets forth 
with this beautiful song. Zechariah sang God's praises when his tongue was loosed. He was right to sing God's praises. And what I want you to know today, if you know only one thing today coming from this, is that waiting for the Messiah to be born into our Christmas is like the angel stopping up Zechariah's mouth. In this time of waiting, let that song build up in you so that you can go out and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Take to heart a few verses of a, a poem called Zechariah's Annunciation by Pamela Cranston. She writes, It was not to Elizabeth, you realize, that the angel came, treading down the stair of muslin air, thick with resined incense. But to Zechariah, her husband, the rural priest and pragmatist, doing his yearly turn of duty in the altar of Herod's temple. His body froze as Gabriel knew it would when the vocabulary of grace poured like fire from Gabriel's lips. Angels always carry warning signs for these events. What he didn't expect was a heart gathered against good news like a clenched fist. Zechariah's doubt turned his tongue to stone, was forced to gestate in its womb of silence nine months long, waiting like the rock of Meribah to be smitten, cracked open by his grief and the strict staff of the living word. Only Gabriel knew how that tongue, once purified, would give birth to pure poetry and praise, unstuttered ringing prophecy, giving to his son at last the true name he never found for himself. Yes, it's all worth waiting for. And I pray that in your waiting, you too will be gathered up praise in your hearts so that when we light the Christ candle, you will give joy for these things have all come to pass. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.
Indeed, you know, that, that sounds like Zechariah singing God's praises, doesn't it? That does, that does. I, you, you brought me to that place, and as I imagined his song and, and on your lips, thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful. We're so grateful to our musicians, and it's great to have our choir back, and we just, uh, just pray for no Omicrons that are going to come and take, a, take us backwards, right? You know what? I'm going to make that an official prayer concern this Sunday is no Omicrons in, in, the, uh, in our lives. Uh, we'll pray for those who uh, continue to uh, deal with COVID and, um, and its, its, uh, its effects. Uh, let's pray for Rhoda Allred. She is um, uh, continuing to recover very well from her uh, knee surgery and uh, covets our prayers and appreciates our prayers. Trudy Beveridge, of course, stays uh, close to our hearts uh, in our prayers as well. And then three families that um, have lost loved ones here, uh, Dorothy Covell, uh, Jean Duncan, and Dorothy Harker. We've uh, sent them on to glory, uh, but we know their families appreciate our uh, care and support in this time. Uh, if you have not uh, yet sent in your prayer concern, do send it in uh, on Facebook uh, so we can bring that to the people too. Um, thank you, Ann House, for lifting up Diane Voliva. Diane has uh, moved uh, in with her mom and uh, is still undergoing uh, recuperation. Uh, mm -hmm. Good. Oh my goodness. Okay, we, she's in critical condition and, and going to the hospital, uh, perhaps Chapel Hill. So let's, yes, indeed, in Chapel Hill. So let's um, pray for Diane Voliva. Um, thank you. Um, and Leonard uh, Seyfert, um has asked us to pray for John Caps, and so we want to uh, honor that prayer too. Here come my faithful uh, messengers. Thank you so much. Gentlemen, uh, let's pray as well for uh, Sandy Brown. Uh, Sarah brings us a prayer for Sandy, who fell and broke her hip, a good friend of Sarah's, as well as uh, Billy Hanrahan. Uh, she still grieves the loss of her friend Beverly, uh, and now her dog has pancreatitis, so uh, we will pray for, for her. Um, John uh, McLeod, thank you, John, for bringing us prayers for John Gilmore Sr., for Judy Pittard, for Patty Lawton, and for Nancy Barefoot. Uh, Karen Willis is, um, is, is uh, writing to us and uh, inviting us to pray for uh, today for Jason. Uh, he is fighting a serious infection. And uh, another uh, prayer came over Facebook for Judy Pittard as she recovers from the first of two surgeries uh, on injuries sustained in a bad fall. So many, many needs uh, and many things that God is, is hearing and knowing and taking uh, care of for us and with us. So let us go before God together in a time of prayer. Most gracious God, we give you praise this morning that we can come before you in prayer and be those like Zechariah who were recipients of the great news that God, you have sent a Savior into the world that we can anticipate like he did and Mary did and all the others uh, that one will come and be born who will save us. We lift up prayers for these that we have mentioned today. We're very concerned for them and, and our hearts are uh, broken open for them. And we offer them to you and, and, and trust them to your care. Oh God, uh, uh, 
be with us as we move through the Advent season. Help us remember how to wait, both with patience and with action and expectancy. And we will be faithful to pray the way the coming Savior taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Turn, if you would, now, please, to page 13 in your hymnal. And there you will find a liturgy for uh, the great thanksgiving for communion. We have been, uh, uh, and we will today, serve in a special format. Uh, I will be here with the bread. Uh, Julie will be here with the cup. Uh, and an usher will be here with the uh, tray that has been um, prepared uh, as well. Uh, so uh, we, uh, in case you want to come for the tray and get the pre-packaged, you simply just need to do that. If you want the traditional intinction, just pass by the tray and come and have the intinction. Uh, and we offer those. We also offer the gluten-free uh, wafer for those uh, who need that too. Uh, on page 13, there are all of your words and most of my words. But there are little spots where it says the pastor may uh, say some words for the occasion. And I've selected the great thanksgiving for Advent. Uh, so you will hear some prayers uh, that we lift up in this special season. Let us go to God, for the table has been made ready. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join and praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. But you put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send empty away. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he broke it, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, as a holy and we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. 
as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us come forward at the usher's direction, and as others are coming forward, be in prayer and reflection for them and on the word today.
Let us give thanks to God. We thank you, God, for this mystery and for sharing yourself with us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to share your love with others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our host, amen. As it comes, as we come, <clears throat> excuse me, I just choked up. It was such a wonderful experience. God bless you all for being here. During this time of dedicating our tithes and our offerings, there are many ways to give uh, online, here, uh, in person, and through the mail. But we also want to ask you to not only give of your monetary gifts, but also your time, your presence, your service, and your witness, especially in this dark time. Please bow your heads for the dedication. Emmanuel, God with us, in gratitude for the mercy you showed our ancestors in the faith, and in thanksgiving for your holy covenant with all your people, we lay these gifts and offerings at your feet. You have the power to multiply them for your glory, that those less fortunate than ourselves will be blessed according to your will. During this time of Advent, fill us with your light of the Holy Spirit so that we will illuminate the world as we joyfully spread your gospel of love and salvation for all humankind. In the precious name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray, amen. If you'll please stand for a hymn of sending forth, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1 through 4.
Dear friends, may your waiting be like Zechariah's, in which he waited for the Lord to come, in which he waited for the one, the Messiah. May you be blessed in his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Clark.